Americans have always been told that America was discovered by Columbus in 1492. However, this statement is not true. America has always been home to the indigenous people. One thing Americans are not told is that before Columbus discovered America, 10 million people already lived in present day USA. A 2010 census showed that this number dropped to around 5.2 million, but this number may vary. As sung by Bob Dylan in the song Blowing in the Wind, yes, and how many deaths will it take till he, realize, he realizes that too many people have died? When will American people start realizing that their country is shading the truth? When will the history lessons be truthful? As, said, as illustrated by Martin Luther King Jr. in Letter from Birmingham Jail, Injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. When will American people start considering the injustices performed by their government? Please raise your hand if you have ever heard about the 1868 Treaty of Fort Laramie. As far as I can see, not many of you are raising your hand. This proves my point that we are not being taught the correct information. Now here is what that is. As more and more European settlers came to America from Europe, from Europe, more and more conflicts occurred with the various tribes. One tribe in particular who resisted this conquer was the Sioux people, who lived in the present day areas illustrated in the orange. Sioux, the Sioux people, leaded by their chief Red Cloud, um, wanted to defend Powder River country. Powder River Country is sacred hunting ground to the Sioux, and it is located in present-day Wyoming. Red Cloud and his allies, when they heard that white settlers were going to build a uh, fort in Powder River Country, allied together and used strategic military tactics to lure these enemies into battle. This method eventually worked, and the Sioux ended up victorious. This period of fighting was called Red Cloud's War. It lasted from 1866 to 1868. The Treaty of Fort Laramie eventually ended this war. The Treaty of Fort Laramie established the Great Sioux Reservation, and it set the Black Hills aside to be exclusively used by the Sioux people. The Black Hills is very, very important in the Sioux culture. It is where the Great Spirit created their people. It is like holy land for them. In the treaty, the US government agreed to stop building forts along the Bosman Trail, and the Sioux people agreed to start practicing farming. The peace of this treaty only lasted until 1874, when General George Armstrong Custer started an expedition throughout the American West. He reported gold in the Black Hills. This caused a rush of white miners to come onto the Black Hills, even though this land was exclusively set aside for the Sioux people. The American government did not enforce any consequences for the Sioux, and the treaty was officially broken and more fighting started. The question I'm addressing today is to what extent should the Sioux tribe have controlled over promised territory in the West? Um, specifically, land granted to them in the 1868 Treaty of Fort Laramie. Since the Sioux lived in the Americas thousands of years before Europeans arrived, they should have the right to control their land. Some solutions to my topic include asking your elected officials whether or not they are following treaty rights, making it a national requirement to teach children in schools about treaties, and simply remembering that Native Americans are still here. Other solutions include taking the situation to the United Nations. This would be a more serious solution. We can take this situation to the United Nations through the UN Declaration of the Rights of Indigenous Peoples. The overall solution for the Sioux, however, would be simply giving them back the Black Hills as intended in the 1868 Treaty of Fort Laramie. This would finally show some justice and progress on our government's part. In the 1980 Supreme Court case, United States versus Sioux Nation of Indians, the Supreme Court ruled eight to one that Congress was wrong when it took the Black Hills from the Sioux. The Supreme Court decided that the Sioux's land should be paid for in full amount plus interest. The current offer for the Black Hills is $1 billion. However, the Sioux refuse to accept payment. They don't want the money. They just want their land back. How are Sioux people living today? What is life like on a reservation? 
Current statistics from American Indian youth show that 70% of the Sioux on, Pi on Pine Ridge Reservation are unemployed. A total of 60% of their homes are not supplied with electricity. I mean, 60% of their homes um, are infested with black mold. 39% of their homes are not supplied with electricity. 90% of their population lives below the poverty line. 90%. Infant mortality rate is three times higher than the rest of the United States. The life expectancy for a man on a reservation is 47 years old on average, but for an average white man in the United States, the life expectancy is 76 years old, according to Statistica. These images that I presented to you are images that every non-Native American in the United States must see. These images show reality, and these are images that must be remembered. The most recent situation with the Sioux occurred in 2016. This is when our government wanted to build the Dakota Access Pipeline through a Sioux reservation. If this pipeline were to break, it would easily pollute the water sources of people living nearby, and it would also violate the treaty by running through sacred ancient burial grounds. People were unhappy with this, so they started protesting. During the protests, 487 people were arrested just for expressing their concern with this project. This, these protests, called the Standing Rock Protests, finally showed how indigenous people all over the world were standing up for their rights. The Obama administration denied a permit for this pipeline to be built, which was a major victory for the Sioux and other indigenous peoples. However, when the Trump administration came into office, they revised this decision and the pipeline continued to be built. Many people may argue with my point and they may say that the Sioux do not deserve to get the Black Hills back because the Black Hills brings a lot of economic boost to the American economy due to its beautiful nature and tourism. On a, user call, on a website called debate.org, a user by the name of Eric states, quote, if we gave back the Sioux the Black Hills, we would be giving far more than was ever taken. We have added value to the land by extracting resources from it that the Sioux would have never learned how to do. According to John Locke's theory of property rights, you own as much land as you yourself can cultivate. When the Indians sold Manhattan Island to the Dutch, the island was there. Now we have built a glorious city on it. If we were to give that back, they'd receive far more than was ever taken. The same concept applies to the Black Hills. First off, Mr. Varick does not understand that Native American people had different values than white people. According to the United States Gold Bureau, tragically, while many in the Native American population knew where gold was, few valued it for anything. There was some that later found it useful to trade with settlers, but most viewed it as nothing more than a shiny piece of earth. So even if Native American people knew how to extract gold, that wasn't very important in their culture. They saw land as a spiritual thing, not a materialistic thing. As said by legendary Sioux leader Crazy Horse, one does not sell the earth upon which people walk, which shows how they highly valued the spirit in their land. Regarding the Black Hills, this was land exclusively granted to them by our government in the 1868 Treaty of Fort Laramie, which is a mutual agreement between the Sioux people and our government. When European settlers came to the Americas from Europe, they saw America as a new world, a fresh start, a blank page to write some stories on. What they did not realize is that in this new world, on this blank page, stories were already written, the stories of indigenous people who called this new world home already. America today promotes justice, equality, but if our, Amer if our government signed treaties with these people, these treaties must be fulfilled if we promote things like this. If these treaties are not fulfilled now, if they weren't fulfilled in the past, then when will they be fulfilled? If you look at the facts, these treaties must be considered now. Thank you.